It's submission slavery. No, it's not slavery. In fact, submission comes naturally. When mm. you find a man who understands his role as a man, mm. and you find a woman who understands her role, when the two of you come together, submission mm. comes naturally. Let's move around you and high school. Yes. You never had a high school boyfriend. In high school, I, mm. I, I cannot say I didn't have a boyfriend. Mm. I used to have a, 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 a man somewhere in another school, mm. you know, ISO 2, but there was totally nothing and it was not going anywhere. So even after Form 4, that mm. thing was like dead, dead. When you have sex with a man or a woman, you are tying your soul to this person. And let me tell you, before you get married, you have to break those soul ties because discipline begins before marriage. You know, when you remove sex from a relationship, ask yourself, what does your partner bring to the table? Mm, 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 mm. Prisha. Wow, what a journey, what a journey, what a journey. Lessons are fatty. See how far we have come. I, I don't know by the time this episode is airing, I don't know how much, how many subscribers we're going to be at. But of course, by the time this live recording was being done, we were, we were at around 68 68,000 uh, uh, subscribers. I think from the beginning where we were around 60, what? Were we at around 60? 65, isn't it? Yes. So welcome to all the new subscribers, of course, to Dr. Fonike TV. Lessons are that with Dr. Fonike. And how much are we grow? We are growing as a family. We are growing as a class. The lessons are hitting home. And of course, a big appreciation to all the digital content creators, social media platforms that, of course, have made Lessons of 30 as their pickup point for clips to share. I told you, we are not selfish with the lessons. Let them hit to every foot, to the four corners of the world as long as this new generation or this generation is impacted is inspired is taught the lessons are free to everybody and everyone ladies and gentlemen I want to appreciate, of course, to all my past guests who have come on the show and they have offered their minds, they have offered their wisdom nuggets, and we are growing as a family. And Tennisana, please, before you continue, go on the subscription button, subscribe to Dr. Funike TV right now, so that you also get a notification every time we upload a new episode on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, all right, we want to get straight into it. I told you. We are not leaving any stone unturned. We are hitting everywhere from, from marriage to baby daddy to baby mama to money to finances to marriage to education to uh, position of the family uh, to black tax. And today we're going to be handling another crazy topic, ladies and gentlemen. The lady and the guest on the show, I'm telling you, Hilda. Now, Hilda Lumati. <laughs> Hilda Lumati was married as a virgin. I want you to I want you to take two seconds and ask yourself, as a man, as a lady, as you're watching the show, what is your body count? The notion on the street has been, ladies will exaggerate. They said, ladies, the lesser the number of body count a woman gives you, actually do a multiplication of two, and the and the more the body count a man gives you do a subtraction of around two times because they say women give less the body count and men give more the body count because, uh, well, it is a society. But I don't want to talk too much, ladies and gentlemen. The author of the book, Married a Virgin, Hilda Lomati, live on Lessons at 30. Subscribe and share. Let's get straight into the conversation. Hilda, welcome on the show. Thank you. It is such an honor. It's such an honor. You wrote <laughs> me an email. Yes. And told me, Dr. Fonica, I want to come on the show. Yes. And I want to talk about sexual purity. Yes. I lost my virginity to, uh, and this is a story to, a story with every every boy who has been raised up in the ghetto. I mean, I grew up in Urumba, Dandora. And uh, boy, what do I get to my lose uh, to my lose virginity <laughs> to the house managers? Mm, All right. Yeah. I'll never forget her name. I think I was around, um, I think I was around 11. 11, 11 years? Mm. Not even 11. 11 was too far. I think it was around six, seven years. Yes. And I'll never forget. Her name was Esther. Mm. 
I'm not forgetting her name. Mm. And ever since from there, I have never been innocent anymore. Mm. She took advantage of me, Esther, whatever you are. She took advantage of me. Oh. Let me take Sorry. some <laughs> Esther, I look at your geisha. I love you. Oh, gosh. You waited until marriage. Yes, I did. How old are you, first of all? Right now, I'm turning 29. You're turning 29. This month, actually. This is your birthday month? Yes. So as 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 of 29 years yes. Hilda has only had a sexual encounter with only one man my husband your husband yes so your body count <laughs> is one my body count is one imagine <laughs> are you okay yeah i'm very fine very very fine let's start from the beginning mm. <laughs> um because they normally say that a uh, virginity is not absence of opportunity mm. is absence of uh some absence of something there's a word there's a word and I, I there's a statement i had somewhere mm. what inspired you to keep your virginity and your pre and purity until when you got to at what age did you get married to? i got married at 26 turning 27 26 turning 27 yeah so since the day one of your life until 27 until 27 years no man had ever touched you no man have you ever seen any and, man? And, and people think I'm crazy. I, I think you're crazy. <laughs> I myself, I think you're crazy. Yeah. Take me through. Let's start Hilda growing up. Yeah. Hilda has grown up in the village. Mm. I, 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 I've grown up at um, Kakamega County, Malava constituency. Malava constituency. Yes. Mm. Both parents. Mm. And uh, my parents were very good people. We have grown up in a stable home. I mm. can't. I cannot complain. Mm. I've grown up in a stable home. Mm. I've grown up with strict parents. You know, African parents the way they can be. Mm. So I've grown up with very strict parents. And and being in a house where dad is telling you do this and don't do this, and he means business. Mm. That is the kind of environment I've grown in. So they made sure we have, you know, encountered village life. Mm so that we can understand what it means to stay in the village. So in my primary school, I went mm. to a primary school in the village. It was called mm. Moonlight Junior Academy. Mm. And then from there, I went to high school, which was um, Sacred Heart Mukumo Girls. I know mm. you've heard of it. Yeah, Mukumo Girls. That is where I schooled in, in high school. Mm. During that period, we used to stay home. I used to go back home. And there are times I would admire to come to the city because I heard of Nairobi and I'm like, when will I ever go to So Nairobi? at this point, you've never stepped into Nairobi? There are times I used to go when we've closed school. Mm. But dad was very strict. Mm. There's a day I remember I even, I even cried because we had closed school and I, I, I wanted to go to Nairobi. And, and dad <laughs> was like, no, until you complete home four. So during that time, mm. I ha I knew what it means to stay in the village. We will go to the shamba. Right now, I can I can manage village life, mm. even as a wife, because I know what it means to be in that space. Mm. So fast forward, I mean, now, do, do you think just before we do you think probably the girl, the the ordinary girl today mm. cannot balance both a city life and a village life? Yeah, we have that problem because. The Bible even says that uh, parents teach your children mm. the ways of the Lord so that mm. when they grow up, mm. they don't depart from it. Sometimes mm. in our homes, we, 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 with our current generation, we have parents who have raised their children in this uh, city life. Mm. And I'm not saying you just have to go to the village and gone are the days we used to go to the village and see our grandparents. Mm. Gone are the days we used to go to the village and see how Neza Chunga Ngombe Aje, you know. Mm. Mm. We, we are missing that mm. with our current generation. We are missing mm. that. So you find that when people get married, trying to, to uh, balance life in the city and life in the village becomes difficult. Mm. You, you cannot go and stay in the village because you're not used to that. Yeah. We need to have that balance. And I think that is one of the things that shaped my character as mm. a woman. Just being in that space where I understand what it means to be in the village. I appreciate that life. Mm. And then now I'm in the city. So where is the balance? So God forbid uh, you and your husband run out of finances. Yes. Would you still go back and adapt a village life? Definitely. I don't have a problem, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and your leader, Mambo Haiko Sawa, Akisama Trudi Ushago, Tunarudi. What else are you supposed to do? Outa Baki Town, Mambe Basu, and Oshago, Mimi, so Shago. Ni Baki Town, Nikifanya Nini. 
and this is a family, and he's the head of the home. If my husband says, move here today, I am moving, because I have to listen to him. I have to submit. Is submission slavery? No, it's not slavery. In fact, submission comes naturally. When mm. you find a man who understands his role as a man, mm. and you find a woman who understands her role, when the two of you come together, submission mm. comes naturally. I don't have a problem submitting to a man who is led by God. Mm. Yes, I don't have a problem. If God is leading him, then I have to trust him. So leo mambo ikikuwa mbaya, aseme chwende ushago, we are moving. What is that one thing that you can, because I'm pretty sure you have a house manager in the house. Definitely. What is that one thing that you cannot allow your house manager to do for your man? That this one, this one, I have to do it for myself for this mm. man. For example, me in my home, I, mm. I, I, I make sure anything to do with my man is me. Mm. I have to ensure my, my, my husband's clothes are ironed. I do mm. that. Yourself? I, yes. My house manager can cook. Because, of course, there are times I'm busy. Mm. I'm running up and down. Mm. So he, she can cook food. Mm. But now, when it comes to serving my husband, that is my job. It is not her job. So in case I am not home and my husband is home, mm. I ensure food is on the plate. When my husband is ready to eat, I ensure chakula. Because I, am, I understand my husband, mm. I know the portion that my husband needs. And Oof. I know how he wants to be served. So that is my job. There are lens my house manager cannot, cannot like cross. Mm. Yes. And, and does she enter your bedroom? Definitely no. In fact, when I'm leaving home, I lock my bedroom. If it is cleaning, you are cleaning until this, this end. Mm. Don't go past here. Because that is our secret room. You know, a bedroom matrimonial home is very secret, especially mm. your matrimonial bed. Mm. And, and I think that is one of those, the things that people need to understand. You cannot just be allowing your house manager in your bedroom like that. There needs to be rules in your mm. home. There are things she can do and there are things she just cannot do. Wow. Okay. I, I love how this conversation is going. Mm. So now you have cleared your phone for yes. what happens after that now? Um, can I just go back to, you know, my high school days? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, during my high school days, I was this girl who, you know, sometimes I would feel I was naive at some point because a lot happened in high school. Mm. I would see a lot of things. I would see uh, people talk about boyfriends like it's nothing. And, and of course, ukiwa for mfo, unajua pia kuna vinyo unezenda funky, muna kutana na kachali, unona muna pendana, muna ndikiana mabarua, vitu kama hizo. I would see people get pregnant even in high school. Mm. And that used to bother me a lot. And, and I, would, I would wish that I've had that burden in my heart for a very long time. Mm. And I felt like um, we need to save a generation because so many people are doing things the wrong way. And not because they, some people are lacking the knowledge. Mm. That is true because we sometimes we live in ignorance. But there are those who have the knowledge, mm. but they choose to do otherwise. So whatever I saw in high school, I used to tell myself when I complete school, one day God just give me an opportunity to impact a life and tell them, listen, whatever you're doing is wrong, especially when it comes to pursuing purity. Mm. So now, when I completed high school, I joined university. So even before, let's 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 hover around you and high school. Yes, you never had a high school boyfriend. I I used to. I don't take high school boyfriends seriously. <laughs> <laughs> like you know the way someone can ask you how many uh, men have you dated, mm. and you're just like, okay, one. Because now in high school, I, mm. I, I cannot say I didn't have a boyfriend. Mm. I used to have a, 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 a command somewhere in another school, mm. you know, ISO too. But there was totally nothing. And it was not going anywhere. So even after Form 4, that mm. thing was like dead, dead. Now when, when I entered university mm. is when now I got into a serious relationship. Okay. And that is, that person is not my husband. Am I clear? I'm getting you. <laughs> I am clearly following the story. Yes. So after after high school, I go to African Nazarene University. It's it's a Christian university and there are some rules and regulations. Mm. And I think that is one of those things that even helped me. So I, I go to university. Uh, you know, when, you, you, when you're in university, you have a clique of friends. You know, this mm. is what we are doing. This is what we are, where we are hanging out and stuff mm. like that. So I go to university. 
And then just around my home area, I start dating a, a certain boy. Mm. Yes. Wow, now you're calling him a boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. So we, we like dated for until I was almost completing my university. That was like four years. Wait. So you dated uh, for four years? Yes. So if I'm connecting everything and if I'm connecting the dots. Mm. So for this four years still, this guy never had a chance of getting the cookie. Never. Never. And I was very clear from the word go. And so, that is very important. Mm. Because I I had made up my mind. And you you know, let me go back to being in form 3. There's mm. a day I was at home and I used to have this friend of mine around our court. So this friend of mine I had given him my <laughs> mathematics assignment mm. to like do it for me. Mm. And then we agreed when he's done, he'll bring he'll bring it at home. Mm. So I'm in the house and dad is around and then this guy comes. He knocks at the gate. Guess who opens the door? Dad opens the door. Dad, the strict dad, the lion, the conqueror. <laughs> he opens the door and he ta- he calls me and tells me you have a visitor. So this guy comes in the house and I knew I am in big trouble for just entertaining a man. So I go downstairs and I see this guy and I'm like, oh my God, now what, what do I do? Where do I go from here? So I talk to him and I whisper to him and tell him, because he had never seen my dad. Mm. I tell him, this is my dad. So I think we can just have this conversation later. You can just go home. Mm. So the time he's leaving, dad wakes up and dad says, can the two of you sit down? And then my dad asks this man, what do you do for a living? And the guy is like, I'm just a form three student. And yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah and I Studies around. is what I do so for a living. How did you meet my daughter? That was my dad. And what are you doing with my daughter? And that that time I had failed my exams. I I'd actually had a C plus. Mm. So that tells me, now this is the reason why you're failing in school. Because Kaziako ni wanaume. And I remember that day asking my dad to his face. And I think that is one of the things that I did wrong. Mm. I asked my dad. It's, is it wrong to have male friends? And dad gave me a slap of the year. He gave me yeah. a slap. I still remember that day. And he told this young man to go back home very fast and he should never see him around me. Do you know right now I sit and I look back mm. and I tell my dad thank you for that slap. Because you asked him that uh, is it wrong to have a male friend? Did yes. Now at your at your age is it wrong to have male friends because now you have the answer <laughs> No it's not wrong to have male friends it just mm. depends what are you doing because mm. you will not have female friends for the rest of your life you live and have workmates who are male mm. but how are you taking care of yourself do you know your boundaries as mm. a friend So during that time I I don't know why my dad gave me that slap but I went to my bedroom I cried I even told him I want to go back to the village I can't stay here I cried mm. and I remember telling myself I think that has just summed up everything me with somebody's son never Can until never. the time of marriage let, let me let me just ask uh, still around that mm-hmm. can a man and a woman just be friends without any desire to engage sexually definitely I think we need to go back to the original kingdom agenda on how, why sex was created in the first place. I think that is where we are getting it wrong because with the current society sex is everywhere Dr. Fueneke sex mm. is, is it has been normalized. Mm. In fact, if you're not having it, you're the one who has a problem. Mm. When it's supposed to be vice versa. So I do this with so much compassion because I know people have gone through a lot. Some people it's not even their fault. Mm. for them to like lose their virginity mm. but i'm here to remind them that there is something called secondary virginity secondary virginity is when now you decide accept i have done a mistake mm. i have slept with 1 2 3 and 4 people go back to god and ask for forgiveness mm. and tell god to give you another chance like but, from but it, today but, But he it doesn't it, 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 a second virginity does not fix the physical part of it. I know, but we are seen as anyway. Mm. Hata wewe kuna sin umefanya in a different way. Mm. 
Mm. And there's a scene I have done in a different way. Mm. And it cannot fix the physical part. That mm. is very true. Mm -hmm. But how genuine are you? Because you can decide from today, I'm not going to have sex until my time of marriage. Are you genuine? Are you intentional? Are you willing to wait? Because it's not going to be easy. So that means you enter into a new relationship and tell this man or this woman, we are not having it until time, our time of marriage. So this because four years. Yeah. Th this four years with this guy. So for four years, this guy was patient. He was patient until he was patient no more. <laughs> so that is what made me walk out of the relationship. Mm. And one thing I used to tell myself, if a man comes my way and they start talking about, you know, can we have sex before marriage and everything? Mm. That man is not my husband. That I knew that. And I knew that is going to help me know what boundary not to cross. And I was very clear from the beginning because mm. it is important for you two to be on the same page. Mm. And know that, okay, we have messed up if you've messed up. Can we start this journey together? Can we wait until our time of marriage? Did you ever see him naked? Who, my... That boyfriend at that time? No. Naked, naked? No. Yes. So you never saw him naked. He never saw you naked. Exactly. No sleepovers? No sleep. In fact, he was staying with his mom, his parents. So <laughs> where am I going? So where would you guys meet? <laughs> where would we meet? Mokutana Shule. Ah, tumekutana ni, ni mtutu hapo court. Like, we are in the same area. We stay around the same area. Mm. Yeah, it's, like, like, it's just like the next door neighbor. So, uh, and I used to tell him, mm. I cannot. And I thank God because kuna tu your grace mungu alinipatia to keep holding on because I will not say it, it was easy. Sometimes I would feel crazy. I remember there's a time I cried in my room and I said, eh, na ikitu ni lazima because you meet people and they tell you, ikitu si sabuni, peana wewe. It, ikitu, alafu mtu anakuuliza, what if you enter marriage and the sex is trash, will you run away after <laughs> committing? Where Usha will you go? Ya, kuna kitu. Eh, what will you do? Nikashimi inyui. Eh. And then people would even ask me, hey, Hilda, where were you? Sawa, where were you? Sahi, nani? Oh, will you scare wapi? Mtu anangoja marriage. Unambiwa hadi, when you go and buy an avocado, you need to know if it is ripe for you to eat it. When you buy a car, you need to test drive it. So, <laughs> now, ungewai pata u chalia kichit, would you have felt anything? Did you love him? Yes, I did. I was genuine. Mm. I, I was genuine because I don't go into something when I'm not genuine. Mm. So for I think what really helped me is I knew who I am. It's important to be self-aware mm. and know what, God's, what God says about you. Mm. So I knew, and even during that time, I was not close to God. Like I didn't mm. have a, that good relationship with God. I was one of those girls who would say, ah, church is not important. I can just pray at home and okay, I miss going to church. I don't even listen to sermons. I don't read my Bible, but somehow God helped me. Mm. So I, I was very self-aware and I had made that decision. Mm. And I said, Liwe Liwalo, I will wait on God. And I promised God that if you help me get there, mm. I will look back and hold someone else's hand. And tell them, listen, I know society is saying this and this, and the noise is everywhere, but you can wait. And God has told us in his word that those that wait on him will mount up their wings like eagles and fly high. I, as, as I'm seated here, looking back, I can tell you, waiting on God is not in vain. <sighs> you're, you're human you are a woman. I am a woman. Your body is going through some certain transformation. Yes. Uh, now you can see your, your your boobs are growing. Yeah. Your body is transforming mm. and you're growing. You know, to feelings. Like, oh my God. Nilikuwa <laughs> naskia. Because in flesh, you know, there are no pastoral hormones. Ati uyu ni pastor, pastor mm. skivo. Mm. No, no. Mm. There are no hormones for people who are in church and people who are not. Mm. We are the same. If flesh, ni mungu tu aliumba. Na huyo mungu aliumba. He flesh, ametuambia in his word. 
that flee from sexual immorality. In fact, God is telling you to flee from it. Mm. It's like he's telling you, run away for your life. Mm -hmm. I am the one who created, because sex is God's idea. Sex is not bad. And we should not, you know, when we are teaching about purity, we are not telling you sex is bad. That's wrong. Mm. Sex is beautiful. Mm. It's amazing. In fact, mm. God created it for a reason. So God is telling you, I want you to enjoy it in the context of marriage. You see, when you read the book of Genesis 1, 27, 28, it said God blessed them and told them to go and multiply and fill the earth. Ukiangalia your verse vizuri is like God is telling Adam and Eve, you go and have sex. I have blessed you. He blessed them. Mm. So when you're having sex outside of marriage, it is not blessed sex. Unaiba. Unaiba. And God is not happy. Do you know God is happy when you're having sex with your husband and your wife? Because that is why he said in the context of marriage, you enjoy it, you fill the earth, you multiply. But what we are doing right now, we are doing it outside of marriage. Outside of the covenant. Because now, you know, I'm wondering, I'm and, asking myself as a man, and of course, on behalf of the men that are watching, mm. you say you love this man, but for four years, umse, and probably, truth be told, if he wasn't cheating, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, wait, how 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 Sie sipati mtu lakini minda minda jifungia kwa room nitafute mabeti I I no I didn't and then I used to hate you know right now people have um dived deeper into things like masturbation yes. and in pornography mm. and it's everywhere because hello the internet hakuna kitu hautapata huko I used to hate that and I would feel like Kuna kitu, kuna kitu shetani anafanya na hiyo kitu. Like, why are people masturbating? Why are people having sex emotionally? If I, if I, I, I have to explain that. Emotion, mm. Why? When you, when you masturbate and get used to that, you will never satisfy your wife because you're used to satisfying yourself. Mm. So how do you get into marriage? And remember, Dr. Fweneke, you get into marriage and this is how powerful it is. It is for the rest of your life. When mm. God said a man will leave his father and mother and join and up and cleave, that and cleaving become. is deep. And I think we lack that information. Mm. That's why when you, you see people get into relationships, alafu mtu anasema, eh, uyu, nampen, na, tum, tumeko sana, but in a scarce years, I don't know if you've seen those scenarios. Yes. Mm. You, you have tied your soul to this. When you have sex with a man or a woman, you are tying your soul to this person. There are things called soul ties, and those things are real. You have sex with this man or woman, mm. you start behaving in a funny way. You didn't have anger issues. There are things we pick from people when we are having sex with them. There are things sex is drawing from us as mm. individuals. Mm. And when you, when you tie yourself to this person who is not your husband, how many people have you been married to? If sex is meant for marriage, how many people have you been married to who are not your soulmates? Because a soul tie is supposed to be with your soul mates, not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your friends with benefits. None of those. Not even your fiancé. Wacha ni kwambia ukio kwa yo level ya fiancé, how jafika marriage. Hey. So at least ni meonesha intention. <laughs> ni anza kuonjeshwa. Uanza kuonjeshwa. Yeah, at least ni me show by then iko serious. So anza kuniwai something. Mm, no. You need to be joined together in holy matrimony. Sealed. Before we get there. Because yeah. I also want us to talk about uh, about soul ties yeah. in, uh, uh, deeply. Mm -hmm. So now after four years, you break up with this guy because he cannot wait anymore. Yes, because now I completed my, my university in 2018. Mm. So by the time I was completing, I was done with this relationship. Mm. And I remember telling myself, can I just try and, you know, shut down the noise in this world and know who is Hilda? Can I have time with Hilda? Understand Hilda? Mm. So I was in my singleness and I was enjoying my singleness. 
tumeachana na huyu i am focusing on myself i have graduated from university mm. now i'm minding my business and okay. do, yeah and do you know during that minding of my business is mm. when i now met my husband what do you guys in, meet we you know uh, the funny story is we went to the same university with my husband but i never knew him okay we were in the same university doing different courses mm. Again, he's from the same estate. Oh, you yes. have a thing for estates? Yeah, ni kama Mungu alisema wewe hautalipa fare. More like hautakula fare wenyewe. Hautakula fare ya wenyewe. So, now I I during my graduation year, I used to have a friend who was a male, male friend. He tells me I, I want you to take me somewhere. I was he was going to see a friend and that time we were having a conversation. Mm. So he tells me I want you to take me see uh one of my friends there's something I'm going to pick. Mm. So I was like why not because we were together at that time. So we go. And then now I meet this man. And I remember he did what he did. They talked and everything and we exchanged numbers. Mm. So I went back home. On what basis? You to friendship. I don't know. Ni friendship too. Okay. Yeah. So took a exchange number so me I went home. Now while I'm having a conversation with him, I realize we are in the same university. He actually knows my sister and my brother. Because they used to be in the same class. Class. Uh-huh. So I discover these things with the time. You know, we are talking and let me tell you my husband Ali Nikatiana Bibilia. Ah, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, I was reading the book of numbers and I realized yeah. I don't have your number. <laughs> I, I think at that point I met him at a good space with God. He had, mm. he had built his relationship with God mm. because he's the one who even took me to church. You know, men are master builders. If you want a good woman, you have to build that woman as a man because you know what you want in a wife. True. So he comes, we will meet sit outside he will tell me do you know about a proverb 31 woman i'm like what's that because i was not into bible Bibles that much and everything yes. yes and he will teach me and tell me this is what a proverb 31 woman does and we'll have conversations and he even ask me do you go to church i said no i don't go maybe once in a while he told me i want you to go back to church so in, he introduces me to a church called uh, lord's gathering fellowship church mm. and i start going there with him on sundays we meet up we go We meet up we go remember we are not dating we are friends because let me tell you one thing um dr fweneke mm. we as women we tend to imagine we are in relationship you know until a man tells you can you be my girlfriend do you know you're assuming well because when did the relationship start is it because mulikutana mukalala pamoja now you're dating what are we what are we exactly So that really helped me because I was like Mimi by the time I get into another relationship that man has to be clear what are we So I remember one of my birthdays mm. he, he texts me out mm. And on that day it was actually the day after my birthday he asks me now can can you be my girlfriend We had had a good friendship a good friendship for how long For that was 2018 2019 2020 All this time jamaa anaangalia tu mahindi ikimea. Mahindi ikimea. Nakumbuka kuna bado hatuja have your deep conversation nimwambie mimi ni virgin. So he doesn't know that you're a virgin until yes, this point. Yes, because now why am I telling him? I mean, we are just friends, so why, why should I tell you my business? How much time are you guys spending together even during this friendship in your mind? in my mind because in his mind he already knew what he was doing yeah yes the boy and, knew what he was doing and you know there are days i would joke and tell him he would come and tell me hey by the way me i like you and everything i'm like are you, are you serious hata kuna siku alikuja home nikamwambia me i'm dating me me i'm not in a, i don't want to be in a relationship i'm dating and i lied to him mm. because personally me i wanted to know what are the intentions of this man what intentions does he have with you yes so i uh, he We, we we you know we have this friendship it gets to a point where now he decides he wants to take me out for 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 for, for dinner and we go and i didn't like the restaurant he took me mm. so and that hurt him until today 
So and it was like, was it cheap? I can't even remember the name. Tulikula nini chipona fish fingers. So the kind that I ate and then I packed the remaining food. Nikamwambia this you can just carry along. Mm. So while I was walking, I gave it to a street boy. Mm. And that never impressed him. Because he was like, okay, you don't even know how much money I have. You don't know how much I've struggled for you to go and just have some nice meal in town. Mm. And then you're giving out my my <laughs> my food. So I remember we used to have a conversation and he would ask me, where do you want to go and eat? And I would joke, I want to go like Java, you know, those places. Mm. So he remembered that. And then he decided, you know, he took me on a date twice on the same day. Tulienda tukakula chipo, akanipeleka sasa Java. Akaona, I am happy. I know that's crazy. Nah. Yeah. So for me, at the back of my mind, mm. I was just like, God, just give me a sign. If this is the man for me, just give me a sign. Mm. Give me a sign. I don't want to get into another relationship and waste another four years. Mm. I'm not in that space. Mm. So on that day, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And, and I remember I was so happy and I said yes. And we began dating. Mm. Now officially. Officially. Because now I'm taken. Mm. Now, and when you're taken, you behave like you're taken. Mm. Yes. So I we start we dated for one and a half years. One and a half years. One and a half years. Does he no know? sex? Does he now know that there's no sex? Did you tell him the same same day that? Now, to one... yes. Now you're scooping. <laughs> Nilimwambia. Mm. Now what happens? This, I'm a virgin, and he was shocked because that time him he was not believing that he virgins when I exist. Mm. He was shocked. Nikamambia, Mimi, I'm a virgin. I have to be honest. So if we are getting into this thing, I want you to understand you will not have it until. We are married. <laughs> and as a man, I know that can be. In fact, men don't like that topic because we're fact, most men don't like virgins these days. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Excuse me, end of unjo na mtu mungine, alafu ukuje. Imagine squeeze ni ukuje na experience, surely. Na CV. Na CV. Eh, na referees pale chini. How? Jemo wa umo, <laughs> kevo wa roisambu. Those jemo wa umoze and kevo wa roisambu are soul ties. And let me tell you, before you get married, you have to break those soul ties. Because discipline begins before marriage. If you're used to kukula, 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 let me tell you in marriage, that is where we have adultery. So mm. if you don't discipline yourself before marriage, it's mm. going to be hard for you in marriage. Why? Let me tell you, in, if, if we are honest, the way we, we are always told, give your conjugal rights to your man and, uh, or, your hus- or your husband or your, your wife, mm. It is not every day you have sex in marriage. There are days you cannot have that sex, but do you have the discipline? That discipline comes before marriage. Okay. For example, when women are going to give birth, women go through a lot. Tell me, if you're not willing to wait for your woman three months, see, you tend to commit adultery. You're not used to staying that long and you feel like, I mean, I cannot. That's why people are cheating in marriages. The discipline is not there. And you have to build it before marriage. Ukiingia marriage unajua, hey, apani for the rest of my life with my husband and my wife. Liwe liwalo. So let me ask, this whole time when you're maintaining your sexual purity, yes. are you the only person who knows that you, you're a virgin? Or even your family knows, by the way, this is our sister of ours. Funny enough, my, my family members never knew. In so fact, you're the only one walking with your virginity number plate? Yes. In fact, they knew after I wrote the book. That's funny. But some of my friends knew. So I, 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 I wanted to keep it to myself because let me tell you, whoever is in your ear has your faith. Mm. Whoever you're listening to, they will either build you or break you. Uchenda kuchana na mtu umambiwe ni vajwa kwambia na wewe. Wewe kichwa wako iko sawa. Patiana ikitu bara. Wewe patiana ni nini? You will find people who will make you feel bad about yourself and I didn't want that. I wanted to keep it because ni mimi tu naelewa na Mungu wangu. Na Mungu anajua mbona mm. ameniambia I follow this path. So for one and a half years you guys have dated. Was he a virgin as well? He was not a virgin. Mm. When I met him he was not a virgin. And I introduced the concept to him. 
let me tell you, um, Dr. Ofoneke, when, when you start giving God masharti, God siwa masharti, God akona plan yake. Mm. And God can use anyone. Anyone. God can use, can turn around anyone. So if I would have seated and waited for another virgin, I would have missed out on my husband. So by the time my husband was meeting me, mm. And I was honest with him and I told him, listen, I, am, I, I want to wait. So if, if you're not comfortable, just let me know. We cannot have this. And let me tell you, at that point, he had a good relationship with God. So even me mentioning it to him was mm. easier for him to understand me. Sometimes, he kitu ni ukua kwa mungu. Ju, ukua kwa mungu na kwa dunia, hautaweza. So for one and a half years, P.S. la akacha, akacha zake. So pia kashikilia njia yako yova. Ya... Akashikilia secondary virginity. I think he's a good example of secondary virginity. Akashikilia. In secondary virginity, God is, is just telling you, listen, my child, you have slept with 10 men. What I'm asking you, can, can your 11th man be your husband? Basically, if I would break down secondary virginity, mm. can your 11th man be your husband? Not your boyfriend. Your, your manen, husband. Your husband. So my, my husband waited, and I'm not saying it was easy for him. There are days he would feel, eh, hey, manze kungoja, manze. Eh, manze unajesuwa mkasubi, manze unangalia boksa, hey. inakani tent. <laughs> you know? Did, did you ever sleep next to each other? Yes. Au kuna mka manze unasikia, ina kudunga dunga, unasikia hiki, ina nidunga dunga, ina nidunga dunga. Let me tell you a funny story. Mm. There was a time... My husband told me, at that time he was my boyfriend. Mm. He tells me I want to take you out on vacation in Mombasa. Wewe oh, ukisikia vacation Mombasa, watu wanaenda kufanya nini in your mind? Yeah, ni kuvakam. Eh. Hey. Mm. So he tells me I want to take you on vacation. At that time he he had introduced me to his parents. Mm. So they knew we are in a relationship. Mm. And I remember my mother and father-in-law were very 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 disappointed when we were telling them we are leaving tomorrow for Mombasa for a vacation one week. I remember my mother-in-law telling me, hey, mimi si kuzaliwa juzi Hilda. So there's no way you're going for a vacation and you people are not husband and wife. Munaenda kufanya nini? And because me and my husband knew our journey and mm. we knew we have a promised land ahead of us, we mm. cannot afford to disappoint God. Sisi tulienda without their consent. Mm. Took our bags, SGR, Mombasa, one week. Can I tell you, I had a vacation with my boyfriend. No sex. We came back. Did I die? I didn't die. Ulukon, it is possible to be in a relationship. Costume. Nilikuwa na vastum in costume. Na ya na vaa boxer. Exactly. Muna ingia kwa swimming pool. Alafu. Mujo uke mka boxer, si swimming pool boxer. Na kume mei. Eh? Exactly. Wanyonye ime stick kwa. kwa. Auko na sima, oh my God, I can't, I cannot. Of course you will have feelings. It is normal to have feelings. Mm. But how do you, that's why we have self-control. And that self-control comes from God. Mimi by the way, I used to, I, I used to be the accountable partner to my husband. I used to remind him, listen, we cannot. At wezi terminate. My, 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 because what is now going through my mind is Hilda. Yeah. Because couples have very, a lot of conversations they have. And I'm sure you guys, okay, you cannot just be talking about church and God and, day and, and night. God, yeah, I know. See, you guys, were have, you guys were having some nasty conversation as well. Yeah. You guys were not having any Hey, those nice nasty conversations. Hey, 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 and if you feel you cannot wait, and it's very hard for you, mm. avoid secluded areas. Avoid, kama unona wewe huwezani, unajua mimi nilimsaidia, jumi on my end, I'm a virgin. Him, he had done it before, so. Mm. So I, I was the one coming to, and you know men are visual beings. Sometimes mm. women, we have a role to play. Because when a man sees this, I want that, and I want that now, you know, tomorrow, and I want to touch that. I want to do this. But can we have more men who understand the work of a zipper on their trousers? And more women who say no and stick to the no. Trust me, 
you are you are going to help yourself emotionally, physically. A lot is happening. When you have sex, a lot is happening. And by the time you're healing from that, you have drained yourself as an individual. What I, I, I encourage people is, can you just enter marriage hall? You will have that sex until, I don't know, acha kuwarakisha. So now one and a half years, you're done. And now... And so, now he, he tells me now, he's introduced me home. Mm. And now he tells me, I want to come see your parents. Let me plan with my people. We come see your parents. Uh -huh. So that happens. They come all the way to Kakamega. And you know, if a man understands your value, they will go all the way. If a man understands your value, he will go all the way. All the way. Nothing will stop them. My husband knew my value. He came all the way home. Akaulizwa dawari akalipa. We came back. He proposed. We planned a very beautiful wedding. And we were joined together. Now this night of the wedding. This night of the wedding. Let me tell you. On my wedding day, I danced. I was so happy. In fact, when I was wearing that white gown, mm. uh, me, I felt like God is telling me, my child, you, you, you know, you made it. So Nikitembea down the aisle, I was so proud of myself. And I told myself, oh my God, the day is finally here. So I had fun. I danced. Now the evening of the wedding, mm. now the day has come to an end. Reality hits me. I have to give this cookie. Sasa he cookie. <laughs> I get longer hiding. <laughs> this is a wakati umefika. Hakuna ati wa kesho, kesho kutwa. Hakuna kuhepa. Now this is my husband. And it is his right. <laughs> any day, any time, anywhere. You know? <laughs> so we get into our car. We headed to our hotel. Tuko kwa gari. So now we go, we, we go to our hotel, our hotel room, the one mm. that we had booked, because the next day we were flying mm. out. So, do you know, I didn't lose my virginity on our wedding night. Oh, come on. Even you, Hilda. Muchoyo, wewe. Si uchoyo. Hilda, ni nini? Umse amengoja item yote. Let me tell you. Like Paka melipia ngombe. I know. Let me tell you why I was telling you discipline begins before marriage. That day we were tired. T for tired. Kama angekuwa mtu mbaya na angekuwa na intentions mbaya, ata yu usiku angesema na uyu, ai? If you, you, he had married for the wrong reasons. Yu siku, he will, not be, he will not have been a happy man. Do you know that morning? We slept well. To come, because we were prepared and we went and took our flight. Mm. And I lost my virginity outside the country. And I said, eh, this God. <laughs> <laughs> How did this even turn into a testimony? I know, for me, it's like, Lord, I like where? Eh? Asama, you deserve it, my child. Eh? <laughs> Go be and enjoy. So, so which country did you lose your virginity? In Zanzibar. God damn. So we went to Zanzibar, and that day that we, we, we landed, <laughs> Mungu akasema sasa hii ndio siku. Twende guys. Twende kazi. What are the myths that you had heard about breaking virginity that you were scared of? I was told that it is very painful. That mm -hmm. is one of those things that I was told. Mm. And I was told you when you break your virginity you will the first first days you will not enjoy sex and everything because mm. now you you know. Mm. So for, for me my experience I remember that day that I lost my virginity I cried. Because of the pain, or because, oh my God. Not because of the pain, because I was like, wow, did we just make it? Did I just do this in marriage? It has always been my prayer that I will do it with my husband. <sighs> and now my husband is here, and it has happened. And now I'm a married woman. Wow. I remember that day we, I cried, and I held my husband's hands, and we prayed. Mm. Sip, sip some juice, sip some juice. <laughs> It when, sounds like a movie. <laughs> no, when people have sex, Hilda, yeah. they cuddle or come out pendwi and answer could have a boxer and yeah. you guys finished having sex. And I and we prayed. And I told <laughs> and I remember I was crying and I told God, thank you. What was the prayer? 
I was like, God, thank you for taking care of me until this time. I, I never knew I could get here. But now I look at your word and I know your word is true. And I look at my husband and I see him as a blessing, a huge wow. blessing. And, and I know people say marriages are scam, you know, marriages don't work. I look at my husband and I say, eh, wewe umetoka kwa mungu. It's like God rewarded me and said, my child, for waiting, here is your husband. And we have lived happily ever after. We even have one child. The child is one Already. year, seven months. You guys couldn't wait. We couldn't. In fact, I realized I was pregnant at time, so, like a month or two. Month or two after our honeymoon. Ah. <laughs> well, well, but, I mean, <laughs> but again, we wouldn't blame you. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't know the precautionary measures of going around that. <laughs> yeah. So two months after breaking your virginity, you're pregnant. Yeah. Did you it enjoy was... the first time? I wouldn't say that you enjoy. You know, that is the point where now you're losing your virginity. Mm. It's not like there is that enjoyment. It's like a moment that is coming and now a door is opened. Mm. Yes. So I would say everyone will have their own experience. True that. And, and don't compare it with another. Don't listen to what people are. You, you and your husband, nini mnajuana. And then huko mkutane huko, nini wawili. How that happens and how mm. it goes, that is between the two of you. But there is joy in waiting for marriage. When God wanted to redeem us and give us Jesus Christ, he used Virgin Mary. That tells you how sacred virginity is. And we are taking that for granted. And let me tell you, with the current society, it is crazy. And I have this burden in my heart. I've had it for so long. Mm. And I remember telling God, how can I share? How can I share this knowledge? You made it for me. You can do it for someone else, but they don't have the knowledge. And I could... The Holy Spirit convicted me to write a book. And that is why I wrote Married wow. a Virgin. Married a Virgin. Hilda Lumati. Yes. Sexual ties as you finish up. Soul ties. Soul ties. Yeah. Yes, soul ties. You say soul ties are real. They are very real. And deep. And for you to break them, it will take a lot of self-awareness and prayer. Because in a kufuata, zikufuata, zikufuata adi marriage. Because you're connected to 10 men, 10 women, 20. How many people are those? And it becomes a cycle. So if you don't realize what you're doing, it's going to mess you up. And you will not enjoy marriage. In fact, you, you might not even get to marriage. Because you're used to just sleeping with men and women everywhere, left, right, and center. How, how do you know that you have deep sexual and, and, and soul ties? When you, when you cannot disconnect from this person. Mm. That is why we, we date, we have exes, but still, kuna tu venye. In fact, say you kikutana na ex wako if you slept with him. There's, there's a way. You mm. know, it is easier for you to leave a relationship when you've never had sex. Do you know that is true? For example, me, when I was leaving my four-year relationship, me me had a heartbreak. Oh, ouch, to that boy. You know, it is that deep. When you connect with a man or a woman, mm. so many people leave those relationships heartbroken. They feel their self-esteem is lowered. They feel so bad about themselves. It is that deep. So you need to avoid that because you will utakutana na your soulmate. Bado umebeba vitu kutoka kwa your other relationship. That is why you need to Take care of yourself and enter marriage hall. And you will not die for waiting for marriage. Just close your legs. Zip up your trouser. Take care of yourself. A lot is happening. And this sex is even killing people and breaking homes. So if you break someone else's home by sleep, for example, if you're a, a girlfriend, umeenda kulala na mumbaba, akona, akona bibi, you're breaking someone else's marriage. Now you're that woman will haunt you for the rest of your life. So what I am saying is sex is deeper than you think. And that is the knowledge we are lacking. When I was growing up, I used to hear abstain. Abstain. Sex is for married people. No one was explaining to me why. But now we need to start talking. Let's make this uncomfortable topic comfortable. 
What are the benefits of sexual purity? The benefits of sexual purity is you reap, you know, the way they say you reap what you sow. Mm. Benefits of sexual purity is when you wait and take care of yourself, God is great. God says those, those that look to me are radiant. Their faces shall never be covered with shame. Mm. You're going to avoid a lot of emotional trauma. You're going to avoid low self-esteem. You're going to avoid a lot of diseases, mm. wrong decisions. There are people who have made wrong decisions out of engaging in sex when you could have just waited and waited on the Lord. So it comes with a lot. It comes with a lot. And I am not saying that when you enter marriage, it's going to be a bed of roses. Everyone has their own challenges. Mm. But somehow, you will know how to handle that. Let, don't let sex be the reason why you and your husband are not connecting. Don't. Because that is something that should be enjoyed in marriage. So take care of yourself. Take care of you. It is worth it, let me tell you. And, and, and don't listen to society. Society telling you, Najua, eh, sahi. Sayata in a lipa, e sex in a lipa, wewe, ebu peana. You know, someone, used, someone asked me, mm. you, if you're in a relationship with a man or a woman, kwani mutaka tu kama brother and sister? You know, when you remove sex from a relationship, ask yourself, what does your partner bring to the table? Mm, 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 mm. If there's nothing, you're connecting for the wrong reason. <laughs> if you remove sex from a relationship, ask yourself, what does your partner bring to the table? Can you talk about your future? Your vision. Can you talk about other things apart from sex? Most of the time, are you just meeting to just have sex and wow, it was good and let me go home. And then after that, you're feeling so bad. Discipline begins before marriage. Akuna shortcut. Wow. Hilda, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having much me. Much appreciated. Thank you. Very deep wisdom nuggets about sexual purity. Mm -hmm. And I like how you finished it. Mm. If they want to subtract a sex from your relationship, what are you left with with your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Yeah. What is left on the table or what is left off the table? Yeah. Lessons of Thought with Dr. Funike. We've just been hosting the one and only Lilda Lumati, the author of the book Married, Adv Married a Virgin. Mm. This lady lost her virginity at 27 years. Body count Still counting at one. Mm -hmm. One. <laughs> Proudly. Proudly. <laughs> yeah. What is your body count as you're watching the show? <laughs> Live on Dr. Fereke TV. The honesty, the transparency, the spiritual backup on it, the realistic aspect of it. I know it's a tough call, of course, in our generation, whereby the first time the conversation starts is when are we going to do it? Yeah. Lessons at 30 with Dr. Fereke. Subscribe and share. Please make sure how can guys get the book? Uh, they can call me through 0739-779762. Or also you can get at Nuria Bookstore. Nuria Bookstore. Yeah. Once again, of course, at 2 073 That is what to get the book. Uh, that, that you can call her, or that is what to get the book. Married, Married a virgin. A virgin. <laughs> So we really do have vages. See you on the next episode. Lessons at 30. My name is the Eagle himself. The Duke of Kakamega. Dr. Fonica is my name.